All right, Calvinism versus Arminianism. What's the deal, and does Crossroads take a stance? Now, this is the second most asked question of this series so far. And it's a little surprising to me because this question is deeply theological. And you actually have to have kind of a background in theology to even know what you're asking when you ask a question like this, all right? This week I was sharing with the pastors uh, that I was going to take on this question. And immediately they started taking bets that I couldn't get this done in 10 minutes. Challenge accepted, all right? Start your watches. Here we go. When we talk about Calvinism and Arminianism, what we're talking about is something called systematic theology. Systematic theology takes the 30,000 foot view, looks at scripture and tries to take scripture and put it into theological concepts that help us understand scripture, the Bible, when we read it. Another way to think of systematic theology, it's like a pair of glasses or lenses that we put on that help us understand what we're reading. We're, We're reading it through a lens. That's what systematic theology is. Now for a little history. John Calvin was a French theologian who lived during the 1500s. And he wrote uh, extensively about salvation and how our salvation worked specifically in concert with the sovereignty of God. Calvin had a huge following in his day. His following is even as big today. And those people who subscribed to his systematic theology became known as Calvinists. That's how all of this got started. Now, oftentimes when we talk about Calvinism, we talk about the five points of Calvinism, and I'll get to those in a minute. But the ironic thing is, is that Calvin didn't actually come up with the five points of Calvinism. A guy named Jacobus Arminius came up with the five points. Jacobus Arminius was actually a Dutch theologian who lived during the 1600s, about 100 years after John Calvin. And one day he was in a fierce debate with a Calvinist, and in the midst of that debate he said, these are the five things that I disagree with you about. And out of those five things came the five points of Calvinism. Now, Arminians uh, had a following in his day, and those who subscribed to his systematic theology became known as Arminianism. That's what it became known. That's the movement. And in recent years, relatively recent history, uh, he's become quite popular. And if you're traveling in theological circles, undoubtedly you will be placed in one of those two camps. Either you will be a Calvinist or you'll be an Arminius. That's one of the two camps that you'll be placed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the five points of Calvinism, the doctrines that they're attached to. I'm going to give you a sentence of how each one views it, and then I'll wrap it up at the bottom, all right? So the first point of Calvinism um, surrounds or is a, surrounds around, or comes around the doctrine of what we call depravity, the doctrine of depravity. That Calvin teaches that every single one of us are depraved and rebellious towards God and that we have no ability, this is important, that we have no ability to trust God on our own without God's special assistance of grace in our lives that when we accept his grace, we believe and we are saved. Arminianism teaches that people are deprived and that they are rebellious towards God, but that people actually have the ability to trust God with some general help that God gives to all people. That's point number one. Point number two of Calvinism revolves around the doctrine of election. Now, this is the fighting one, all right? This is where people get in fights. That Calvin taught that we are chosen by God, that we are elected by God, that God chooses mercifully those he will save, and justly those who he will leave in their rebellion. Arminius taught that God has chosen all of us, that he has elected all of us, that, that he used his foresight to see who would believe, and then he chose all of us in that. In other words, think of it this way, that before the beginning of time, that God looked into the future through his foreknowledge, and he saw who was going to be saved. So, so John Sober, he saw that John was going to choose him in his life. And so before time even began, God elected John to be one of the saved. The third point is the doctrine of atonement. The Calvinists believe that the death of Jesus provided sufficient atonement for all. But in its design, it's only effective for the elect for those who have been chosen. Arminius believe that the death of Jesus provides sufficient atonement for all, 
And by design, that atonement would be effective for the virtue of faith so that you could choose whether or not you believed and obtained forgiveness from God. The fourth point revolves around the doctrine of grace. For the Calvinists, he would say that grace is irresistible. That once you see and experience God's grace, you can't help but take a step in God's direction. And as you do, God does and moves within your heart and renews your spirit and you're saved. Arminian taught that grace can be resisted. That when you see God's grace, you can choose to accept it or not. But if you accept it, then God starts the work in your heart of changing your soul and thus you becoming saved. The fifth point of Calvinism revolves around the doctrine that we call perseverance. That a Calvinist would say that once you are saved, you are always saved. That God is continually at work in your life, preserving your faith. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. The Arminian says that God is at work preserving your faith, but he does not prevent you from turning from the faith. That you can lose your faith. So those are the five points of Calvinism. It begins with depravity, then election, then atonement, grace, and perseverance. Now, oftentimes, when we talk about Calvinism versus Arminianism, we oftentimes move to thinking that the grand point of all of it, or the thing that really uh, separates Calvinism from Arminianism, is the sovereignty of God, kind of. Both of them believe in the sovereignty of God. They just have a little different take on how that works. The real key difference between Arminianism and Calvinism is how you view your salvation. The Calvinist would say that God has produced everything in your life so that you have the desire, the desire for a decision to follow Jesus. The Arminian says that you have produced everything in your life for the desire to choose God, and God helps you in that. So where does Crossroads stand on the issue? We stand with our friends. That if you were to take a scale with Calvinism on one side and Arminianism on the other side, we have pastors on this staff who are Calvinists. We have a few like fence setters in the middle, and then we have some who are Arminians. And then we have Pastor Brad, all right? (laughs) At the end of the day, We can have conversation of this, we can have good-natured arguments over this, but it's not something that divides us. This is an open-handed issue for us. This is systematic theology, not biblical theology. At the end of the day, when we look at salvation, we just lean on Paul, where Paul said in Ephesians that your salvation is by faith, through grace alone, not by your works, so that no one can boast.